Party Hay from West Virginia. Then again, of course not. <laughs> but what I do know, of course, is Joke of the Day is right here ready. So why should you never use a dull pencil? And why should you never use a dull pencil? Well, because it's pointless. <laughs> pointless pencils are very bad. Okay, so we are here on uh, part three of our Solving Rational Equations videos. And remember, when we have rational equations, rational does not mean rational dude, it means we have fractions in them. And so we're looking at equations that have fractions. In this video, the fractions are going to be pretty complicated. Those denominators will not have one single term in them. Those numerators probably won't have one single term in them. And more than that, the denominators, to find that common denominator, it's going to be a little bit of a stretch. We're going to have to put a little more muscle into finding that common denominator. Now we still have these two methods to work with and that first method says we're going to retain the fractions, we're going to get that common denominator, but like I said, a little more muscle needed to put into it, you might need to factor to get your LCD. But once we found that LCD, we're going to adjust those numerators by multiplying numerator and denominator by what it takes to create the LCD and then we're either going to add or subtract those numerators. Being very careful that if we are subtracting, we need to distribute that negative all the way through that second numerator. But we are going to drop those denominators and set the numerators equal to each other, so it is possible that once we've adjusted the numerators, we can go ahead and drop those denominators right away before distributing that negative to prevent us from making mistakes. Excellent uh, tip that we can use. Um, but then we'll have an, an equation that's pretty easy to solve, so we can solve the resulting equation. We just need to be sure that we check our solution because it might be an extraneous root. And you may ask, what's an extraneous root? It is a solution that actually causes problems. That when we put it into that denominator, it causes a zero in the denominator of that fraction. And you know what happens when you have a zero in the denominator of the fraction. Your fraction is undefined, and remember, undefined means it doesn't even exist anymore. We need our fractions to exist, so we need to make sure that we are not going to have zeros in those denominators. Now, our second method says, let's get rid of all those fractions. Let's get rid of them in the first step. So we're going to take our LCD and we're going to multiply every single term by that LCD to get rid of all the fractions in first step right away. We'll have an equation that's pretty easy to solve, but we'll still need to check for um, extraneous roots or extraneous solutions. So let's get into this because I think at this point we're pretty familiar with the steps. So the steps are the same. The only challenge here is being able to get that LCD. As you can see in this example, notice, oh my goodness, look at the denominators. An m plus 4, an m squared minus 16, and an m minus 4. Wow, we haven't seen anything like that. Now remember, in that first method that says we're going to retain the fractions, we need to get the LCD to retain them. We'll need to get the LCD even if we are looking at the second method. So to get the LCD, I'm looking at this going, now hold on a second. How am I going to figure out what the smallest quote number is that they all go into? Well, let's take a look at this and factor it. That m squared minus 16 is the equivalent of an m plus 4 and an m minus 4. Now, when I look at it that way, I go, oh, okay, this one, if I multiplied it by an m minus 4, these two will now be the same. If I multiply this one by an m plus 4, they'll all three be the same. So see, that's what I'm saying, is you'll need to factor to figure out what each of them needs to make them all alike, because that's what a common denominator is. They're all alike. So my LCD then is going to be this m minus 4, m plus 4, and I'm going to adjust every one of these so that they have that denominator. Now you know that an m plus 4 first and an m minus 4 in the back is the same thing as an m minus 4 in the front and an m plus 4 in the back. It's all the same. Now, this one's already there, so no adjustments need to be made. This one I needed to multiply by the m minus 4, so that means multiply my numerator by the m minus 4. So I have a 2 times m minus 4. And over here I needed to multiply the denominator by an m plus 4, so I'm going to multiply my numerator by an m plus 4. Okay, everything has been adjusted. So here's where I can go ahead and distribute here and get a 2m minus 8 over, and here's where I get a little bit lazy. I don't recommend laziness, but this is one time I will. 
common denominator. I just put a squiggle. Plus 5 over common denominator equals m plus 4 over common denominator. I could go ahead and add these because I do have that common denominator right here. And so when I add them, I get a 2m, doesn't combine with anything. Negative 8 plus 5 gives me a negative 3 over common denominator equals m plus 4 over common denominator. And here's where we've talked before about, okay, the fractions are equivalent. If they're equivalent and the denominators are the same, what has got to be true about these numerators? Absolutely, those numerators have got to be the same. So this 2m minus 3 had better be an m plus 4. And now I can solve that equation. And I can go through and I can subtract an m, subtract an m, giving me an m minus 3 equal to 4. I can add 3 to both sides, giving me m equal 7. Now, like I said, you could have gone ahead and dropped those denominators right here. And if you did, you would end up with a 2 times m minus 4 plus 5 equal to m plus 4. But notice that when you distribute through here, you'll get a 2m minus 8, which is right here. And when you get that 2m minus 8 plus 5, that will give you what you've got right here, 2m minus 3. So you can drop the denominator at this point. You could drop it at this point if you wanted, or you could go ahead and combine and drop it at that point. Eventually, you're going to drop the denominator. Now, remember, you do need to check to see, is this an extraneous solution? When you plug it in, will it cause zeros? Now, before, we only had to plug it into one of the denominators because they were all the same. But here, my denominators are all different. So if I plug that 7 in here, will it cause a zero? No. If I plug it in right here, will it cause a zero? No. And if it doesn't cause a zero here and it doesn't cause a zero here, it's definitely not going to cause a zero here. Also, if I plug a 7 in here, I get 49 minus 16. That's not a zero. So you can see how the first method works in this, just like all the other times we use that first method. The only difference is we needed a factor to figure out what that common denominator was going to be. Now recall that the second method said, okay, I still need that LCD but I was going to handle the LCD in a different way. So remember, the second method said once I get the LCD, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by the LCD. But even so, looking at it from the beginning, I still can't tell what the LCD is going to be. So yet again, even if I'm going to use that second method, I still need to factor in order to get the LCD. So here's the factor, and so what that means is I'm going to take the entire equation, and it's going to get a little bit hefty here, take the entire equation and multiply the entire thing by that LCD. So multiply all of it by the m plus 4 and the m minus 4. And remember, that means every single term is <laughs> where it's going to get kind of hefty. But this is a pretty sweet method. Multiply the first term by the LCD. Multiply the second term by the LCD. I know your eyes are bugging out of your heads here. But this is pre it, it, it's pretty sweet. And multiply even the back by the LCD. And once again, the reason we do this is because, oh yeah, there's the gang symbol. When you multiply fractions, you cancel on the diagonals, you cancel up and down, and then you shoot straight across. So as I look right here, and I check these diagonals, the m plus 4s are going to cancel out. And I am left with a 2 times m minus 4. And then on this one, similar idea, put it over here. This factored as an m plus 4, m minus 4. So the m plus 4s will cancel, the m minus, basically they're all going to cancel out. And I'm left with a plus 5. And then on this one, once again, check those diagonals, the m minus 4s will cancel, and I'm left with just an m plus 4. Leaving me with an equation that's pretty easy to solve, because I'm going to distribute, and then I'm going to combine up my like terms, and you'll notice that the equation that I'm getting here is the same equation I had before. So just like last time, what I'm going to do is subtract that m, giving me an m minus 3 
equal to 4. I'm going to add the 3 to both sides, giving me once again m equal to 7. Okay, so when we go to check this and we put the 7 in here, we'll get 2 over 11 because 7 plus 4 is 11. 5 over 49 minus 16 is 33. And then here, 1 over 3 because 7 minus 4 is 3. Now on these, common denominator is going to be 33. So this will be 6 over 33 plus 5 over 33 equals 1 third. 6 and 5 is 11, and 11 over 33, yes, it does in fact simplify to 1 third. So we know that our 7 is correct. All right, one more example, just because you know I like for you to be very comfortable and confident with this. So we got one more coming, and it's our last one. Okay, so let's take a look at one more example of solving our rational equations um, where we've got some complicated denominators and we're going to have to factor to um, get into it. So remember that that first method, like we said before, uh, means that I'm going to retain those fractions and I'm going to get the common denominator. So as I look at these denominators and I'm going, oh, no, wait a minute, they're all the different. Remember, what you can do is you can factor this one in order to figure out what each of them needs to make them look alike. This one factors as an x plus 3 times an x minus 2. And remember, uh, real good tip, real good rule of thumb is take a look at each of these. That chances are like 99% of the time. That's how this thing's going to factor. So um, this is how it factors. And as I look at that, I go, okay, that means that this denominator, to make them all look the same, it needs an x minus 2. And this denominator, to make them all look the same, it needs an x plus 3. And you know that that means that if I'm going to multiply the denominator by x minus 2, I better multiply the numerator by x minus 2, giving me a 6 times x minus 2 over common denominator. And like I said before, this is where I get kind of lazy because I don't want to write out that great big denominator every single time. I'm going to bring it back in later. Actually, I'm going to drop it later, so I'm just going to kind of get lazy now. I don't ever advocate getting lazy. This is the one time that I do. Now, I'm going to multiply my denominator by x plus 3, so I'm going to multiply my numerator by x plus 3. So that gives me a minus 5 times x plus 3 over common denominator. And over here, I have a negative 20 over common denominator. Now, remember, this is where we can go ahead and distribute the 5 through. We can go ahead and distribute a negative 5 through. Or, eventually, we know that we're going to get these condensed into one single fraction. And we're going to end up being able to drop that denominator because the denominators will be the same. So at this point, we could go ahead and drop that denominator because that sure does make life an awful lot easier for us, as we noticed in the previous example. So here's the resulting equation that is pretty easy to solve. You know at this point, let's distribute that 6 through. That will give us 6x minus 12. Distribute, be very careful, take the name tag with it. The sign in front is the sign that goes. We're going to distribute the negative 5 through, giving us a negative 5x minus 15. And now we have an equation that really is pretty easy for us to solve. We're going to combine up our like terms. 6x minus 5x is x. Negative 12 minus 15 is a negative 27. And we know that from here we're going to add that 27 to both sides, giving us x equals 7. Now remember, you need to check and you need to say, okay, is this an extraneous root? Is it going to cause problems when we plug it back in? Look at these denominators. If you plug it in here, will it give you a 0? No, it'll give you a 10. If you plug it in here, will it give you a 0? No, it'll give you a 5. And the same thing happens here because we've already figured out neither one of these is going to be 0. So that means that that's not going to be, a, that denominator is not going to be a 0. So the x equals 7 is perfectly fine. It's not one of those extraneous roots that will cause a problem in the solution. Now, let's take a look at that second method because remember, you are not required to do both methods. You pick the one you like. Second method says, okay, let's keep using that LCD, that x plus 3 times x minus 2. But this time what I'm going to do is multiply the entire equation by that. And remember, what that means is I'm going to multiply each and every term. So my first term, x, 6 over x plus 3, will get multiplied that by that. My second term... Um, the x or minus 5 over x minus 2 will get multiplied by that. So here's my 5 over x minus 2. And even in the back, that negative 20 
will get multiplied by the x plus 3 times x minus 2. Kind of running out of room here. Now remember, the beauty of this method is it get rid, gets rid of those fractions in that first step. Because here's that silly gang symbol again. You're in my math gang. And remember, the x for multiplying fractions means cancel on those diagonals. So as we look at these diagonals right here, the x plus 3 will cancel out completely leaving us with a 6 times x minus 2, whoops, changing colors on myself, what am I doing? And here the x minus 2's will cancel, leaving us with a minus 5 times x plus 3. And in the back, nothing will cancel in the back, but that leaves us with a negative 20. I'm very sorry, it will cancel. Boy, did I make a mistake, and I apologize for that. That is a negative 20 over the x squared plus x minus 6, which quite frankly is the x plus 3x minus 2. So when we multiply this by the x plus 3 times x minus 2, in fact the whole thing will cancel. So this denominator will cancel with both of these because remember this is actually an x plus 3 times x minus 2. So all of it will cancel. We're left with just that negative 20. Here, remember, this is exactly what we had right up there. So we can run with it and distribute, come out of the like terms, slide that 27 over, giving us the very same answer of x equals 7. Now, remember, we do need to check and make sure that x, um, that x equals 7, is that really going to work? So as we go back to check it, um, I'm probably going to run, run out of room on this check. Actually, let me see if I can squeeze it in right here. So as we go to check, remember what happens here is I'm going to take that 7, I'm going to plug it right in here, so I'll get 6 over 10, and on this one, plug it in there, though that's minus, and when I plug a 7 in here, I get 7 minus 2 is 5, and on the other side, I put my negative 20 in there. Now a couple ways of looking at it, if I put a 7 in here and I get a 10, Put a 7 in here, I get a 5. Well, 10 times 5 is 50. Or I could plug it in here and square it and then add it and so on and so forth. Now here, um, this is just a 1. Or I can get those common denominators of 6 over 10. And then that's going to be a 10 over 10. Multiply numerator and denominator by a 2. And then at that point, I will get a negative 4 over 10. And will this negative 20 over 50 simplify to a negative 4 over 10? Yes, in fact, it does. Because if I divide um, the numerator by 5, I get a negative 4. If I divide the not denominator by 5, I get a 10. So I do create truth, and that tells me that, yes, this is the correct answer. So I hope that helps with your rational equations, the third of the videos. And this is the final video for solving rational equations. And remember, the crux is this right here. You've got two methods to choose from. And in these two methods, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Just remember that the second method can only be used when you have equations. That's the only time. Um, and if you do not have an equal sign, you cannot do this method because then you're changing value. It's allowed when you have an equation because you're multiplying both sides of the pan balance by the same number. That's why it's legal when there's an equal sign. So when there's not an equal sign, you are stuck with this one, retaining those fractions. So if you're one who will get confused as to when you can and when you can't use this method, then for you this doesn't even exist. Just stick with this one because it will work at all times. And so remember, with that first method, you get those common denominators, you adjust those numerators, you can go ahead and drop the denominator at that point because eventually you are going to drop those denominators and set the numerators equal. That will give you an equation that's pretty easy to solve. And then just remember, always check your answer, not just to see if it's right, but to see if it's an extraneous solution, an extraneous root that will cause problems and create a zero in the denominator of your fraction. I hope that helps. Have a fabulous day.